Hey guys, Pop Sean here, and today let's talk about my league starter for 3.24 Necropolis League, which is a Archmage Ball Lightning Eurofin. Now, I'll put a similar disclaimer to last time where it went pretty well, right? We played Caustic Arrow. I couldn't really test it because of the Caustic Arrow Poison and the new Tinctures, and it went really well. I overall had very positive reception, but I will just tell you right now that I cannot possibly test this really out i can put on the archmage support we're talking talked about that in a second but it just works completely different so while i'm gonna show you gameplay just so you know it could it could suck it could potentially suck and i'm going to go in with that promise that i'm not going to reroll anything else one day before i'm not gonna reroll day one i'm going to stick through with that that that's all i can guarantee my numbers do look good though so i just wanted to throw out that uh uh real quickly now when it comes to videos, this is going to be the main build guide video. I'll also push out a leveling guide and a end game guide where we're going to talk about a little bit more on uh, the campaign. And then also, what do you do after like 10 plus divines? But in general, as always, every link will be down in the description, including the max roll guide once it's out, if you want to follow along there. Now, in terms of gameplay, the only problem I have is that current Archimage doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I cannot throw in on this build because it would consume like 700 or 800 mana or something if I actually wanted to do damage. So all I'm left with is show you this right here where I'm going to, with like less than a third of the damage you should have at this point, uh, I'm just going to, I don't know, show you up your 14 maps or, so, or something. If you think I'm, I'm bullshitting you, that's fine as well. Just, uh, just move on. But... <laughs> All I can show you is this. This is going to be the playstyle. So at the end, I actually decided for Frost Blink of Wintry Blast instead of Lightning Warp, uh, simply because I like the movement more. That is basically it. You have to uh, put it on uh, tech without moving. It always travels the same distance, so it doesn't matter where I put my cursor. On Lightning Warp, I actually have, have to put it on the, on the side every single time. And I'm just going to quickly show you how this actually plays. So um, right here, you can see that we have the default, right? This is the default MTX. I'll show you the other ones as well. Now, uh, without Archmage, whenever my Arcane Cloak is not up, I don't do much damage, right? Which is a big problem that will get solved this league. But as you can see right here, uh, doing pretty fine. Now, we can also get hit by something real quick a little bit. Let's get hit a few times. Maybe here. Something can hit us. And then I can, you can see the ES recovery. It's just going up constantly and constantly. We're going to talk about that a little bit later as well because I'm actually going to be using Instant Leech. Um, we can even tank some of these balls. It doesn't really matter. And as you can see, our mana is mostly unaffected, and that is because I have such good energy shield recovery, which uh, kind of pulls me apart from some of the other POBs that I've seen, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, now, uh, once we finish this, I can show you the boss, but the boss is going to be... Uh, <laughs> the boss is going to be pretty mediocre with this kind of damage, I'm assuming. Let's just go in real quick. As you can see right here, the ball lightning actually has way more of a uh, targeting range than you might think. You can see those zaps. Oh, he's, at least he's taking damage. Okay, so that's fine. So one thing you want to do is you want to stay away from the boss because it's important. I'm going to talk about that later. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how this build actually plays. The EO uptime is also quite good. I usually don't do MTX showcases, but ball lightning looks so like meek. And like, obviously the AOE is way bigger than it looks like. But I just want to show you what you can do uh, if you're willing to uh, shill for GGG and just pay the monies, right? I tried both of these, so you don't have to if you don't want them. Automaton is my second favorite. It's basically just this. It looks really cool when it zaps multiple enemies. But the coolest one by far for me is the Celestial one, as always. It actually looks a little bit more chunky. All right, so most importantly, and the biggest mistakes that people are making with mana builds comes from its defense. For the uninitiated, you might be looking at my life, my energy shield, and my mana, and you might be thinking, oh, that's a very tanky character. You can probably face tank ubers. Not really. In fact, I would very much compare it with a right side build that has spell suppression, evasion, and a little bit of physical taken as on leak start maybe a little bit nicer especially against bosses whenever max hit is really important and your evasion doesn't really do much however what i want to say here is that do not overestimate this you're still a ranged build and you still have to play like everybody else just because these numbers look big doesn't mean you're an uber tank and that is mostly because of your pathing on the tree you don't really have access to spell suppression you could path here get lucky spell suppression get reflexes, get evasion gear. You could do all that, but then you would also have to cut on wavering stance, which we're going to go over in a second as well. Armor is a lot more possible, but still, mana builds are quite stretched thin. So what I'm trying to say here, still nice, right? Especially with Arcane Cloak up, with Sigil of Power up, 
big number go up but you have to support that with other things especially since you don't have grace you don't have evasion you have to get the recovery because you're going to get hit a lot but let's first talk about our main defensive mechanism which is going to be mind over matter and divine guidance this is just one part of your defense a lot of people just slap it on and think that's enough no no no. we need recovery stun immunity all of that but first up divine guidance 10 percent of damage is taken from mana before life this stacks additively with mind over matter for 50 percent. this means that whenever you take damage from your life half of that will actually apply to your mana this does however not go for your energy shield and a lot of people think that is a downside the hard part about mana stackers is the mana recovery which doesn't really come up at all if you have a lot of energy shield because it barely ever gets touched the problematic thing here is though that sure energy shield protects your mana from getting drained constantly but that only reliably works if you actually have the recovery on your energy shield what you will see on a lot of league starters that i've seen out there that don't have instant leech that don't make this leap over there and sacrifice eight points for instant leech is they're going to be constantly on zero to like 20 percent energy shield and then all of this max hit will completely go away to show you what that means i can basically put my energy shield to zero with agnostic i would go from 58k to 45k or if i turn my sigil of power and my arcane cloak off I would only be at half of my effective hit pool. And this is one of the reasons I chose Ball Lightning. It's because with Instant Leech, you're going to have a lot of Instant Leech procs. And if you look at my recovery right here, 3,100, 3,500 per second. If I unallocate this, you can see what happens. And that is if you only had a little bit of Leech and you thought that would be reliable. So yes, you will need Leech for both your Energy Shield and your life. Whenever it gets fruit to life, you want to be back up immediately again there's some tech for that we're going to talk about that in the, in the item section as well as important as what we just talked about is immunity to stun the amount of people i've seen who are just running soul of the brine king and maybe the new mastery here that gives you a little bit stun threshold <laughs> from testing against harder enemies i can tell you right now you're going to get absolutely annihilated if you're not actually stun immune i want to make this clear here and the pathing down here sounds kind of sketchy but we're going to battle rouse anyways so all i had to do is respect these sure we're losing 16 percent mana but the 20 strength also makes gearing a lot easier and then we have a three point jewel as well and then we're just basically spending two points unwavering stance is huge we don't have access to evasion anyways basically free and the last step here is that chaos resistance is very important this is not anything new that is true for all builds but especially for a build that gets its mana drained whenever life takes a hit and chaos damage goes for energy shield so you want to be chaos rest capped a little bit earlier than some of the other builds a huge help here is this mastery right here if you're not taking this mastery i don't know what the hell you're doing this has been an absolute savior um i didn't have it before i didn't really know how it would work but after testing it i mean it's 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 just an absolute blessing you have to take it and those things will make red maps a ton easier as for mana cost i guess all i can do really quickly is put in archmage support it doesn't really work like that right now but this would be where it's at 55 mana to 80 mana is roundabout what you're going to be casting so um one thing i want to make people aware is that mana recovery is not as big of a deal as it used to be with this much energy shield to protect it and all you're really doing is you're consuming it with arcane cloak and you're sometimes sometimes gonna get hit through it and when that happens sure but then you also have to realize that you have like 3.8k life but 8k mana so only half of that really fits there so it's not at least in my testing it hasn't really come up that i need more than 800 to a thousand mana region it's obviously still going to be more comfy but most of the harsher mana region you will need once you go something like indigon which we're not going to talk about in this video now what made archmage builds more viable this league is mostly flat out damage increase but on top of that the cost can now be reduced and it doesn't influence your damage so archmage used to read that you get 75 percent of your cost as extra damage so you had to actually scale and get more and more cost and you kind of had to play it with indigon and you had to get absurd amounts of mana recovery but now all it does is it scales off of your maximum unreserved mana which makes it viable for a leak starter that does not have the gear for absurd mana recovery and kind of opens that up and gives you a ton of damage scaling from mana which is also defensive scaling as we found out important to know though a lot of people are talking about zero mana archmage especially on reddit i just want to inform you right now that you don't want to do that if you go to zero mana you're not going to be able to activate your sigil of power 
and you're not going to get a buff from your arcane capacitor. So while stuff like Laviangas or Val Clarity might look good on paper, when I tested it out, it was actually not the best. It was actually here, but it really isn't something you want to use in this build. You do, however, want to get as much reduced mana as you can. I don't know why this one is actually not here. Very inefficient, whatever. Just testing. So you want to get Dreamer. You do not want to get Forethought before you do anything with Indigon. In my version, I do not take Forethought. Don't do it. It will increase your mana. It's really rough. So that's what you want to do. And you also want to get inspiration in your setup right here. So if you look at inspiration, reduced mana cost. Now, important to know here is if you're making POBs for this, you're still spending a little bit of mana, right? For example, in this version, it's like 79 mana. So you're on average, your inspiration charges are probably going to be on four, not on five. Because if I delete this, it just assumes I have the highest value. So it's just a little bit of fake damage. If you have something like 150 to 200 mana, you could probably pop this down to three. Just saying. Now, a huge thing for a ton of spellcasters now is that Arcane Cloak is actually not as impactful anymore. That is a big, big deal. Used to be whenever you have Arcane Clock ticked, it will give you like 80 to 100% more damage. As you can see right here, it is more like, I don't know, 40-ish, 45-ish, which means you're actually dealing considerable damage whenever it is not up and those are important because if you look right here at the arcane cloak uptime it is 64 percent now why did i choose ball lightning ball lightning is a rapidly hitting aoe projectile lightning skill that is just incredibly strong but it has some interesting mechanics to talk about so first up since it hits a lot our instant leech gets triggered quite a bit more than in most other builds and since instant leech is capped for instance that is very important now First thing I want to point out here is it looks really measly, but you have to understand that the AoE of a Ball Lightning is actually a lot bigger. If we go into POB right here and we go to Ball Lightning, what you will see here is that this is your actual radius. If we convert that to in-game, if I have a Ball Lightning here, it would be like this sort of, right? And you will see that while playing. You don't need additional projectiles. I tried it with Pinpoint. I didn't love it. It wasn't really necessary. It is quite good AoE for what it is. Now, it has some interesting interactions with projectile speed. I guess to start out with, Ball Lightning is hard capped at hitting a single target 13 times. Uh, it cannot hit more often. And there is an interval of 150 milliseconds. So you can just throw it on and it immediately pops all the 13 hits. It has a little bit of a delay. But while flying through an enemy, you want to apply those. Now, how do you do that? Well, in order for this Ball Lightning to hit as often as possible while flying through the enemy, there's really only two options. First, you can increase the AoE of your Ball Lightning, which actually increases your clear speed as well. Or you can slower your Ball Lightning, which to some extent we do with slower proc support. It's actually worth it. But everything else, in my opinion, and this is just like, I mean, whatever, right? There's actually people who go adjacent to Mossity to even go like less projectile speed. That's fair enough. I just don't think like it's worth it to go from 11 to 13 uh, projectiles that badly to completely screw up your clear so yeah do whatever you must but not for me i would not recommend going like that slower proj is more than enough and it also does calculate so if you go ball lightning one bolt right that is a single tick all bolts in range basically just means that depending on how often you hit because uh, pob actually does that for you you are going to increase your damage so for example even though slower proc says 19% more damage, if you hover over it, it's actually 86% more damage. So yeah, POB does that on your own. Don't think that this is maximum hits. It is realistic hits. Now, this also means that you should never scale projectile speed or just have it randomly on one of your wands or something. It will actually just break your damage straight up. I'll show you how. Uh, if I had, let's say something realistic, like a 40% increase projectile speed from uh, a wand or something, right? Look at what happens to your damage. You're almost halving it. Be alert of that. And another weird and quirky thing is Ball Lightning has an AoE, but area damage doesn't work. Projectiles damage still does. Area damage doesn't, just in case you are uh, maybe confused why I'm not taking Amplify it's in some of the POBs. It's mostly just about the AoE. Also, that's why we're not growing Blast Radius, right? Just, you know. There is another important part, though, which I see people do wrong all the time. You cannot simply stand on top of your enemy. I mean, you don't want to do that anyways, obviously. But if you stand on top of your enemy, let's say the enemy is right here. What happens is you just screwed up like half of your AoE. The ball has way lower proc rate. You can even see this in POB. If you, for example, put in point blank and you actually get a distance meter or something, uh, you just have to do that right here. And you go 
projectile travel distance. If you stand on top of an enemy, let's say uh, the range would be 10. Look at this. It almost halves your damage, basically. So you don't want to just stand there. You're a ranged build, like most other builds in the game currently. So make use of that. Pantheons are actually really important on this build as well. Now, we are going to be stun immune. So the top part doesn't matter for us. And the second one as well. However, the bottom two are really important. So Mervel, 100% chance to avoid being frozen. Very nice. You can also get it in boots if you don't want to. But the last one also makes us chill immune. 50% reduced effect of chill on you, which scales with the 50% reduced effect uh, from Illuminate Devotion. And I think in 3.22 or even last patch, it got changed to being additive. So now you can actually reduce it to zero. So yeah, this Pantheon means freeze immune. It means chill immune. On top of that, what you probably want to do early is you want to take Soul of Garukam because it gives you a reduced effect of shock on you. And once again, that scales additively with Illuminated Devotion, making you also shock immune. Now, later, you can do stuff like Tukohama or I don't know, like whatever you want. If you're doing Searing Exar, you know the drill. You just go Soul of Aberath. But in general, take this opportunity. There's a reason I'm not going Ailment of Void on Boots or Purity of Elements or anything like that. Take the easy shock freeze and chill immune and once you have a ring with reduced effect of shock on you you can also unspec out of that small pantheon in terms of ascendancy it's pretty clear cut i'm not even going to waste your time there are some other applications if you're using a different skill maybe but hero fan is just almost impossible to beat especially for aoe skills so divine guidance once again very strong gives you a 50 percent mind over matter gives you a ton of mana transfiguration of mind which takes a portion of your increased maximum mana and gives you increased damage you have your big payoff which is sanctuary of thought which is absolutely the reason to go hero fend on ball lightning every single time it doesn't even matter because you're getting that 100 increased area of effect which will give you so much more damage and clear 50 percent less mana cost now that archmage got changed this is actually an upside and not a downside and then we also get maximum mana as extra maximum energy shield which comes out to like 2 to 3k on this version of the pob it yeah it accounts for like 2.5k or something almost 3k it's ridiculous this note is ridiculous i also want to make you guys aware how good the small nodes are mana region effect of arcane surge mana region maximum mana absolutely premium small nodes in between we have arcane blessing which makes it so arcane surge grants 20 percent more spell damage which means it scales with arcane surge effect very strong especially with arcane capacitor um yeah, you always have Arcane Surge up anyways. And then Illuminated Devotion we're going to use for quite a while until we get into the end game setup. It gives you Chill Immune, Shock Immune, pretty damn easy with the stuff I talked about. It gives you even more AoE. That saves us three points because there's exactly a break point right now. If I took these three points uh, instead of Illuminated Devotion, that's what I'm going to do later. Also, Spell Damage Leech this Life is very strong. Early on, it's kind of hard to get life leech unless you have something like a valakos ring so yeah absolutely premium and this is what you're going to take last in uber lab so later in the game you're also going to take conviction of power and that is because of kitaba's thirst we're going to go over that a little bit later probably in the end game section but there is still a way to use conviction of power in terms of items it's pretty straightforward i'm not using any of the crazy uniques as i said at the start it's going to be um life mana on basically every gear piece you can have it other than the body armor, on the body armor, you don't want to have it because you have the mastery for 15% increased maximum life here. But everywhere else, you want your items to kind of look like this. You want resistances, you want mana, you want life. Uh, other than that, you also need one dexterity roll uh, somewhere. And you want mana region as much as you can. But your resistance come first. But if you can slap it in somewhere it's always nice to have it's always it's also going to happen a lot on your wand don't be weird if you get like um resistances or mana region on your wand we are a non-crit build so there is actually not that many valuable suffixes other than caspi that we can get so the resistance situation is actually a lot less tight than it might look on pob another thing is you can get a ton of resistances on your jewels mana plus resistances and then if you can get it in cast speed are premium any sort of resistance as for anoint early on i have mind drinker because it has super good mana sustain while you're in packs once again you're going to get hit a lot because you don't have grace so that means that that mana on kill is always going to be there for you 
it's incredibly strong and later once we are in the quad curse setup we're actually going to replace it for this node right here but that's for later and also a big mistake that a lot of people make is not go for amethyst rings amethyst rings are very very efficient i know you might want to go for power rings i know you might want to go for the other rings that are hard to craft with percentage maximum mana you need your chaos resistance and amethyst rings are just so goddamn easy to get them easy quote unquote because it's an implicit, right? And rolling Chaos Res can be quite a hassle. So that's what I'm saying. Also, if you have space for it, for example, if you have some resistance on your wands or something, you should go for Flask Mods on your Heavy Belt. We're not a Pathfinder. All the Flask Mods are extremely strong. The one unique you see right here is Mind Spiral. This is a Tier 5 unique, which is like Quill Rain, basically. And it has a ton of recoup. The only downside is we cannot leech mana, which we cannot anyways, because spells cannot leech mana. There's currently no source in the game. It also gives us, once again, a ton of maximum mana as extra maximum energy shield, uh, stacking on top of Sanctuary of Fire. And mana recoup is a hugely relevant stat. We, for example, have it crafted right here. This is a Veiled mod, a crafted Veiled mod, that is. And we also have 10% from Battle Rouse, and somewhere we're also going to have it from the Mastery. And another big item for especially early and this is in my early pob is valako sign this is a tier 4 unique so it should be quite inexpensive it gives you a lot of increased damage mana but the most important part is the damage leashed as life against shocked enemies so you don't want to have shock immune maps or anything like that you're going to be shocking quite consistently and this basically just gives you life leech especially until you get uber lab it is extremely valuable, but even afterwards to cap your instant leech. As for flasks, your mainstays are a quick silver flask with movement speed. Now, a lot of people will tell you Frost Blink of Wintry Blast doesn't scale with movement speed, so you don't need to. You still need to because you're still gonna loot and it's going to feel like shit without, just so you know. Uh, I know it looks worse in POB and whatnot, it, it is not, okay? Quartz Flask, this one is debatable. I love phasing on every build. I cannot imagine playing a build without phasing. Although maybe I have to in endgame once I get a Progenesis because it's hard to replace anything else. But yeah, you want some cast speed on here. It doesn't really matter where you get these suffixes, obviously. And then I have a Tri Ellie setup. Now, before I had Granite Flask and Jade Flask in, and it actually looked better in POB than it was in game. That is because of how POB does its max hit, especially when you have like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, either way, I felt a lot better with the tri Ellie setup. If you want to go Granite and Basalt, you can also do that instead. You can also go for Sulfur Flask for more damage. Uh, now, getting a little bit of extra Energy Shield Spell Leech is actually quite nice for your Instant Leech. Because early when you don't do that much damage, even though you have all this Energy Shield Leech, you're probably not going to cap your Instant Leech, which is going to be quite important. As well as that, Reduced Effect of Curses, always, always premium. And then I have a little bit of critical strike chance. I didn't really know what to do, but it does increase your elemental overload uptime. Talking about gems, first up, your ball lightning. The level of your ball lightning is not as important as on other builds because you already get so much goddamn flat damage. All it really does is increase your mana cost from 23 to 24, which is actually a big deal if you multiply it. However, if you get a 21, of course, you slap it on. What I'm trying to say is 2020 is way more important than 21-0. You never want to have a 21 0 because this actually gives you base radius, which is even more damage than getting a 21. Archmage on top. Archmage levels are quite big. Now, the quality does give you increased damage, but a 21 0 is actually better than a 2020, which is very nice. Slower proch, no brainer. Spell echo. Now, some people don't like spell echo, and I gotta say, on this amount of cast speed, I actually am fine with it. However, you can replace it with something like pinpoint if you really want to inspiration um a no-brainer now important to know is the quality is also very important because the quality is another five percent reduced mana they changed this a while ago and then lightning pen obviously awakened lightning pen once you get it after playing a bit more with pinpoint support i gotta say i didn't really like it all that much it looks good in pob because you can stand still and get your intensity stacks and do more damage but I found that I have to kite quite a bit, so the damage isn't really up all the time, and the additional projectiles didn't really add that much clear, so I just didn't feel like it. My movement skill of choice is Frost Blink of Wintry Blast. This is how it looks like. Um, now, I like this one a lot more than Lightning Warp. If you compare them in terms of speed, it's actually slightly less fast than uh, Lightning Warp. But with Lightning Warp, you always have to target on the edge of the screen, and I really like to just walk around like this and not have to think about that kind of stuff. But if you're fine with that, like it always travels the same distance is what I'm trying to say. Even if I click here, it still travels until the end. 
So that is completely up to you. Uh, if you go Lightning Warp, you will have to support it with stuff like Less Duration and Swift Affliction. But uh, beyond that, yeah. For Frostblink and Wintry Blast, I just go faster casting and also calling strike. Funnily enough, Frostblink also often just freezes enemies. I have a Chaos Golem just slapped in there because there was like one socket open. You can play around with this whatever you want. The uptime is not that great, but it is there. Wave of Conviction is there until you have Awakened Lightning Penetration to give you that. And I have that on, on an Arcanist brand together with Conductivity. You just press this whenever there's like an Essence or a Tanky Rare or a boss. Now, main setup is actually Divine Blessing. And the main reason for that is if I go Eternal Blessing, now I can't use Clarity or I have to put Clarity on Arrogance, which reserves like, I don't know, a seventh of my HP, which is actually not really something I would want. Also with Inspiration, the cost is like, minuscule the cost is like 431 which you won't even like feel on this amount of mana so completely negligible as well as that i also go increase duration if you have the gem space so you don't have to press it every 11 seconds you only have to press it every 18 clarity basically my only aura on top of everything else then i have an enduring cry which is automated with the new cult arm support and after that we have on our king cloak setup which if it's up is quite quite big as you can see right here and it also protects you uh, from damage. And um, it has Arcane Surge on. So Arcane Surge is a little bit more effective. Very nice touch. And also increased duration so it has more uptime. Sigil of Power is basically the circle that you stand in. You summon it and you just you have to spend mana. It is one of the reasons to actually go for this. The damage is quite negligible if you look at this. Uh, it's like maybe, I don't know, like 10% more damage or something. But the defense is quite big. So it's still worth kind of positioning correctly. As for the passive tree, it is pretty straightforward. You need instant leech. You need to get over here ASAP. I have that in the notes as well. It is worth all the points. Yes, you want instant leech. Your energy shield will protect you quite a bit. Absolutely loved it while playing. Uh, unwavering stands is necessary. It is a necessary evil that you have to use. The three point jewel is not that bad anyways. We just replaced this one right here. And then the two points. On top of that, we're basically taking any mana notable. You can see, right? Righteous Decree, all of these things are really important. As for Mana Masteries, I actually only went for the Recoup and for the Reduced Mana Cost of Skills. There is some other ones that are debatable, like the 10% of Mana as a Guard Skill, but I didn't really feel it all that much. And then the chance to recover 10% of Mana when you use a skill, which is on average 1% of Mana per skill use, it's not bad. It also works with your travel skill and all of that. But at the end, I had to cut something and I didn't feel like it added enough. It's also anti-synergistic with Spell Echo. Later, you can definitely path for the intelligence nodes, but just be aware that um, increased damage is quite premium because you're not an Indigo build, right? Other than that, one of your big power specs is going to be Arcane Capacitor for a huge amount of Arcane Surge effect. The hits have 25. So it's basically the reverse mastery you are going to use. Still, I know it looks bad on POB. It actually looks like negative damage right here. If I remove it, I get more damage. But the fact of the matter is you don't always have your curse up. And if you don't have your curse up, for example, like let's disable this and let's see how much this does now. Uh, you can see this actually gives you as much damage as like a support gem would. So while mapping, you'll love that one. Now we're not shocking for a lot, but this lightning mastery just makes it a lot easier. It also gives us certain procs that only happen on shock, like the leech, leech on shock. This gives us like 100% or more shock effect. So even against ubers, we can actually shock. Against those, we don't have a lot of shock, but it is there. And yeah, I guess the only other thing is don't get confused by Iron Will. It's just there because it gives a little bit of damage. We're not really doing anything fancy with it. Let's talk about damage. There are some conditionals. Your effect of your shock would probably be around about 30% against most normal and magic monsters. Around about 20% against rares. This is mostly against bosses. On the flip side, uh, if you activate our King Cloak... This is up 64% of the time. That is also quite a big deal. Also for your effective hit pool. Sigil of Power is quite big, but only if you actually have the stages up, which are here right now. Uh, the damage is kind of negligible, but once again, the defense is very nice. Try to be in there. Enduring Cry, in my experience, the Endurance Charges have been up constantly, but maybe with the proc rate or something, maybe it's not going to be up all the time. Sure, I still have them ticked in POB. As for the clarity, not much to say. Uh, I mean, if you forget to press this, then I can't really do anything about it. Uh, Arcanist Brand, you should be throwing, especially early at every rare, because you don't really have much else going on, especially until you get your 6th link. Your 6th link is going to be the lightning pen that you really need, and maybe then you don't have to cast it, but definitely at bosses. Chaos Golem is just something I threw in there. 
uh, you can take it or leave it. It doesn't make that much of a difference. And then, um, yeah, your movement skill. I guess as for flasks, I don't have any of them ticket because we're not a Pathfinder. So just know that when they're up and they're basically always up during mapping, uh, this is what it actually looks like. When it comes to defensive flasks, when it comes to these Ellie flasks, I noticed that POB is very much underrating them versus something like a granite flask. If you want to take a granite flask and you want to get like 3k armor, um, POB will think you're a lot tankier. You can do that if you want to. In reality, from what I've tested, definitely not. Nice for leveling for people who want to follow along exactly like I will level. I will make it my own video, but uh, you can also just get it from the POB. What I'm actually doing is I'm playing ball lightning as early as possible. You don't have to do that. If you just want to level, uh, I don't know, Armageddon brand cremation for the 10th time, that's fine. It is always going to be the best way to do it. And then respec uh, after the acts. This is what I will do as well. After the act, you respec into mana. But I actually do go for ball lightning early. Now I've tested this and ball lightning is actually quite solid during the campaign. So that's what I'm going to do personally. But yeah. Wait for the video for that. This build will also be out on max roll before the league hits. So you can also follow along here with the leveling instructions, with the leveling guide. Uh, ever since we made this build tool, it's actually a lot easier to follow. There's also progression with milestones and stuff when it's ready. Now at the end here, I will also show you guys my quad curse setup real quickly with Kitava's Thirst and Anathema. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to play this. Like I said, I'm going to do an endgame video, but it's still important to put it in here, I think. Uh, Kitava's Thirst basically makes it so that whenever you cast a skill that costs 100 or more mana, um, you will cast everything that's in there. And you can basically do it like a lot of bow builds do it with Quad Curse with Azanoff's Mark. You can do the same thing here. All you need is Anathema and four maximum power charges, and you can apply four curses and that's not just against bosses that's against everything it auto costs right so all you do is respect illuminated devotion go for conviction of power now obviously you have to make up for this you have to get the reduced effect of shock from one of your rings so you're actually shock immune with the pantheon and you have to get life leech somewhere else but at this point you should already have it from your cluster jewel up here from doriani's lesson and hopefully as much lightning leech here as possible although it's not completely necessary the curses i use in the helmet are elemental weakness conductivity sniper's mark and enfeeble you can also use punishment if you want more damage but enfeeble is actually quite big especially when everything is up let's enable this let's enable this uh the enfeeble actually yeah the enfeeble is pretty damn huge now one thing i want to note is kitava's first is a tier 4 unique so very cheap and Anathema is a tier 2 unique, so that's why I have it in a separate POB. That is sort of the only thing that could get expensive and also the taste of hate in here, right? But yeah, that's about it. Cannot wait. This is going to be the first left side build in a while. It's going to be a wild ride. A spellcaster getting away from all those ballista and attack based builds. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm uh, sure to update you guys. I'm obviously going to do day 1 to day 5 updates, depending on how far I will get this. Like I said, I will also put out a leveling guide. I will put out an end game guide. Although my end game guide will be pretty small. It will not include anything crazy there. Because uh, honestly, I don't even know what I will do in end game when it comes to the mana stacker. I know I will go quad stacker, but I don't know afterwards. Maybe even go attack based. Really, the world is your oyster when it comes to mana stackers. But yeah, uh, that's about all, all I got. Hope you guys have a good least start. And uh, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.